I know you're here because you love to see the before and after pictures of homes that have been updated and staged. And today I'm gonna to show you some pictures of a home that actually was a buyer of mine a couple years ago and then they chose to sell. And I'm gonna to talk to you about what updates they made during the time that they owned the house, what they did for staging purposes. And I'm gonna show you what was great and kind of what we talked about. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm thinking that after you see all these pictures, you're gonna say, hmm, Maybe I should get some professional advice before I make those decisions that are going to cost you a lot of money. Hey, it's me, Katie, and I have sold almost a half a billion dollars in real estate, and I've worked with thousands of clients, and I've seen tens of thousands of pictures of homes that have been listed. I know it looks good online. I know it looks good in person. I've been in thousands of homes. And so what I'm gonna show you today is kind of a before and an after, and I'm gonna show you the little tiny differences that you may not notice as a general consumer when you're looking at listings or looking at photos. I'm gonna make you an expert on what looks great. I'm going to make you an expert on what you should update in your home, even if you're not moving for a couple of years. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I had this client a couple of years ago that actually bought a home with me and the home was beautiful. It was gorgeous. It really didn't need a lot of work, but there were a couple things that were a little dated. Like the kitchen wasn't brand new and the master bedroom wasn't it wasn't updated either. So both those things need to be done, but the rest of the house was really, really gorgeous. And it was a, just a beautiful, beautiful home. And so they bought it and they started doing work over time. Now, when they started doing work, they actually continued to keep me in the process. And they would call me and ask me about questions about what should they do in their house to retain the value? Because they knew at some point they were going to end up selling again. And they wanted to make sure that they didn't do any updates to the house that would cost too much money or that they wouldn't make a return on. So that's what this video is about. I'm gonna show you all those things. Now, the reason that I knew this is because I've come up with a list of updates, ones that are really worthwhile and ones that are not worthwhile. These are ones that you can get, you know, your money out when you go to sell and ones you shouldn't do. And so I've really, really gone kind of deep into this. I actually put that together for you if you're interested in my seller's playbook, the link is below. And I'll just show you kind of what you're supposed to update, what you shouldn't spend your money on. And so when I'm talking to my sellers, I talk about this quite a bit and I'm very aware of what you'll get a return on what you won't. Some agents actually just say, yeah, go ahead and do everything. They don't really understand the specifics about what is going to get you the return and what won't. But that playbook down below, that'll help you out. All right, so I'm going to get into it. I'm just going to show you these pictures. We're going to talk it through and I'll let you know what I think. And if you like any of these, you can comment below. Let's have an interaction. Let's have a discussion. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Okay, so the first picture you're going to see is the picture from when they actually bought the house and the room is pretty much the same. Now, in the first picture on the left, that is actually wallpaper. You can see it's kind of like modeled a little bit. It's kind of like there's some dimension to it. It's a little dated now not terrible but you could see they chose to paint the room and on the right that's what they ended up going with now they painted the room kind of a somewhat of a similar color if you look on the left truly the only thing that's kind of different in this room is the furniture and they actually added that chandelier now they worked with a decorator when they were doing all this stuff in the house and decorators are a little bit different than stagers decorators are not thinking about resale they're not thinking about what you know the house is going to sell for they're not thinking about the return and so so when you're talking about getting a decorator, I want you to get a decorator for the way you would live. But if you're thinking you're going to move, I don't want you to get a decorator. I want you to get a stager. And the reason why is a stager or even a real estate agent knows what buyers specifically are looking for. So I talk with my clients who are actually talking to their decorator on the other side. And the decorator was bringing in some of the ideas that I was saying to make sure that they did not put too much money in or do some things that would not help the house to resell. But this room is actually one of the most beautiful rooms, I think, a beautiful transition. And you can see that they changed the light fixture there. They changed the rug and they changed the photos on the wall. One thing I want you to note here is the drapery. So you can see on the left that drapery is heavy, very heavy and dated. And even just by taking that off the wall can make a huge, huge difference. So if you decorated your home, like maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 years, and you got really, really heavy furniture, that really will make a difference in how buyers see your home. And this house had a lot of heavy furniture. So you can see that with the chairs and that big heavy piece on the right side there, it just made it so super, super heavy in the rest of the house. Like I said, I'll show it to you as well. But this picture is a perfect example of kind of what a staged room could be versus one that's not. The one on the left really does look like the house might be dated, but it's literally the same exact room. Now this room also, this is their living room. This was not changed much either, but I want to show you the little tiny differences here. So if you've watched my videos in the past, you know I have a phrase and it's called fake it, take it, make it. And what that means is you're going to fake it. You're going to fake the furniture. You're going to fake the way the house looks. You're going to take it. You're going to take a great 
picture because pictures mean a lot when you go to sell and then you're going to make it you're going to make the money this room is really a perfect example of fake it take it make it even though this was how they lived i just want to show you some significant differences in here if you look at the room on the left you're going to see that that furniture there is very heavy again and it's a little bit dated in addition there's that huge gigantic chandelier right in the middle of the room and so what they did is they lightened it up they changed the chandelier and they actually had some furniture in there and they made it a little bit lighter now the interesting thing is is this picture is taken in a way that it doesn't make the room look bright and airy on the left but in the right you can see that there's room and space between the furniture and between the lens so you can see that it looks more airy there is not a ton different in this room than the furniture and that chandelier but you can just see the difference that this furniture does make now here's the same room from a different angle and you're going to see that the one on the left it was very very heavy you have that large couch there you've got the heavy fireplace there the heavy furniture the dark rug and the picture over the fireplace along with those like lights over the over the mantle there it's just very heavy now it's a nice picture it's it's nicely exposed for the outside of the house and the inside of the house however you can see on the right they actually brought in a little bit more trendy furniture and it looks light and bright as well so that helps in that situation now one thing you're going to say that i've talked about before is rugs i am not a huge fan of rugs and pictures unless they're super super neutral okay and i mean like no colors now you can see both of these rugs have colors in them the one on the left is more dated and so that rug i probably would have recommended that they take out for pictures now the room on the right this is actually the way they lived and if you're in the house this decorating is gorgeous the blues in the rug are picked up nicely in the rest of the house that warmth it's a real nice warm color so because that room is decorated so well I did not suggest taking up those rugs even though they were a color because it is more trendy it looks more contemporary and so that doesn't really look dated but if you do have rugs that are older oriental type reds and blacks I recommend taking taking those up if you have hardwood. And the reason why is they just don't show well in pictures. The, the rugs on the floors don't show well. It just shows better when you have hardwood. Even if your hardwood floors are not looking awesome, I still recommend this. So this room on the left is the original family room and it's nice. It was very, very decent, but you can see they had that large TV in there that was kind of a built-in that was gonna need to be replaced. And so what they did on the right is they actually did a new mantle and they did a new built-in with the TV above it. Now this picture, the reason I show this is I just wanna show you a couple small differences in these two pictures if you look at the one on the left first of all they have a rug that does have some color in it that isn't doing as well for the room as the one on the right the one on the right is a neutral rug so you can see that that shows a little more bright a little more airy but what they have on the left are those pillows those pillows are super dated with those fringe around it and so by even just removing those pillows from the picture it's going to make the room look a little fresher and a little younger also if you look at the lighting fixture on the left side you're gonna see that that looks a little dated right I mean, this was decorated really well. I thought this house was decorated nice. It felt very, very comfortable. But by changing out that and putting in the ceiling fan on the right, it just made it look a little fresher. Now, also on the left, you will see they got a lot of stuff up there on top of that shelf over the TV and over the fireplace. It was just probably a little too much. So this is where a stager really comes in to kind of say, okay, this is what we need to do in the house. So you don't always have to bring in new furniture because if they had made these little tiny changes in this room on the left, if they had maybe changed the rug, out made it something very neutral you can get it like you know home goods or wayfair or something like that and then if they had just taken those pillows out completely out and maybe just even capped that light fixture it would have changed this room dramatically and take down some of that stuff so you can just see the little tiny things that make a difference and this really isn't even going to cost you any money to make those changes now this is the same room going back to the other side and i wanted to show you this because i wanted you to see the rug there on the left and the furniture and it just doesn't look as light and bright and airy Again, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy new furniture, but just take a look. On the photo on the right, there are actually no pillows there. The pillows probably were a little bit distracting in the photography. The rug looks white-ish, and so it's nice and bright. In addition, the walls are painted a little bit lighter color, and it's a little bit brighter. I like to show this picture because on the left, all this is, the only thing that's different from the left to the right is the actual furniture that was used and the light fixture. In addition, the picture was backed up. So you can see there, all this is, is fake it, take it make it right fake it so they brought in different furniture which is nice and clean they almost could have achieved the same thing with this other picture if they had maybe replaced those chairs and made them a little more trendy and then replaced that light fixture but then I say take it so you can see that this picture by backing up and having it a little brighter the picture looks it's a little more dynamic and it's a little fresher so fake it take it 
and make it. So now, like I said earlier, one of the things in talking to my clients about what they were doing over time was to make sure they were updating things that were worth their money. Were they going to get it out if they were going to sell? Was it going to translate well into pictures? And like I said earlier, I have my seller's playbook below. I promise if you download that, that could save you tens of thousands of dollars, especially if you're thinking about going to update a bathroom or a kitchen or something like that. I promise you that is worth the free download. It'll show you the high cost, low return updates that you absolutely should not be making in your home. And remember, this is for you over the course of the life of your home, not just if you're going to sell. So make sure you download that. Now, this isn't what I'm suggesting you do. I'm showing you this because this is a kitchen that was completely remodeled. And I wanna to talk to you about the remodeling of this kitchen and kind of what they did to make it look a little better. They wanted the kitchen done for themselves. And as they were doing it, again, they had a decorator, but they were also talking to me about what should they do do in redesigning this kitchen. And one of the things we talked about is that that bar there on the left with those stools really cut off the whole flow of the kitchen. And I suggested to them, I said, I really think you should make it flow into the eating area and to the family room. And so their decorator really did come up with this and absolutely gorgeous. I mean, she did a fantastic job, but you can just see the difference by having that bar there. That's why you should make sure that you're talking to an agent or a stager early enough to come in and talk to you about these things before you make the wrong decision. Because if they had redesigned this the same exact way it just wasn't going to be updated and bright now would it have cost them money if they had done that probably not but what is done here is what people are really looking for right now and again you can see this is the kitchen from the other direction and you can see that that bar there just really cut off the whole room and the one on the right opened it up a lot now they actually kept the same refrigerator there you can see that and they kind of worked around it because it was a pretty good refrigerator so you can work around things and figure out what you want in the house but definitely if you're working with a stage or you got to talk to the agent about what is going to resell and what is not. So if you're looking for a great agent and you don't know where to start, you can start right here. I know what it takes to be a really good agent and I know those agents who might be fibbing a little bit about their experience. So please go ahead, fill out that link below and I'll make sure I find you a great agent in your location. So this room you can see on the left is the original. Now they didn't really do anything in here. They did replace the carpet, but it's essentially the same and they painted the walls. They changed the the ceiling fan, which they didn't necessarily have to do, but their furniture is different. So now I'm showing you this one to show you what a difference furniture and paint can make in a room when you go to sell. So you can see that on the left, it's very heavy, it's dark, it feels a little dated, even though this room is essentially the same exact room. And on the right, it's just lighter and brighter. Now that also has to do with the pictures that were being taken. You know, remember, fake it, take it, make it. Now on the left, you're gonna see the heavy drapery as well. They completely took those off and they had blinds in the room. That does update it a little bit as well. So I'm gonna to talk to you about this bathroom because the bathroom was actually a really big discussion that we had a lot of conversations about and I talked with their decorator about it as well. So this was the original bathroom and you can see it's okay. I mean, clearly it was dated. You know, it was probably a eh, 15 to 20 year old bathroom. Now in this bathroom, you see that massive, massive tub. The tub is almost never used by people. I mean, honestly, I, I'd I probably should do a poll on this, is who uses their master bath in their master bedroom? Not many people use it. And so when you have a tub that's taking up that much room, it's taking a very, very valuable space in the master. And if you look to, on that right picture there, it had a very small shower. Most people nowadays love this luxurious shower. They love it. They love being in there. It's like an experience. When you have a shower that you just have to kind of squeeze yourself into, people don't really like like that it just gives them sometimes the heebie-jeebies a little bit so they had told me they were going to kind of redesign this and they were going to do a freestanding tub there and kind of have the same thing and I said to them you know I just don't love that because not everybody uses the master bath and they said well we don't either I said well then why are you going to do it they said well we thought it would help with resale I said you know you are taking a risk by not putting a tub into the master bathroom you are and some people may say you know what we're not going to buy the house because there is no master tub as long as you have a tub like upstairs or in the house for the kids, for bathing little children, usually I find it's okay. And in this situation, I said, I'm just not feeling like you should keep the tub because it's really valuable space. And I would rather you get a bigger shower. Is there anything you can do to get a big, nice big shower? And so they went back to the decorator who, not me, I couldn't really tell them exactly what to do in here, but then the decorator came back and this is what they ended up with. So you can see that shower is absolutely 
absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful, right? It's huge. It's like this huge two-person shower. And then they had this vanity here. This is how it ended up, but how the design came back to me when I was talking to them is the tub, freestanding tub, was like right in the middle there. And then they had these two little countertops, two little vanities. You know, it was, I felt like, Mm, I don't know. I, I wasn't feeling super comfortable with that because this is an expensive house. And typically any woman is in an expensive home like this wants to have a makeup counter or at least a place to put their hair dryer down on the counter when they dry their hair. I've seen a lot of bathrooms that don't have any counter space. And so I, whenever I go in, I always think, well, where do they put their hair dryer if they're not drying their hair? I mean, you can't put it in the sink. And so generally the women need a larger area for their makeup and for their hair dryer. And so this only had two small vanities, like the one on the left, and then they put the bathtub in the middle, like just a smaller freestanding because they thought they needed the bathtub. And I said, you know, you are going to end up with a lot of, of women probably who aren't going to think that's enough area for your makeup and to get ready in the morning. So now they had a huge master closet that they could go in and maybe adapt that for it, which would have been fine. But I really felt like making a call on this was that if you don't have that extra space, for that woman in the master bathroom, it could be a real issue. Now, again, many of you have homes that are, you know, $250,000. And I don't want you to freak out because you have no counter space for makeup or hair dryers or anything like this. This is when you get to start from scratch and you're thinking it through from the beginning. And that's why when you bring in a decorator, you also bring in an agent. So they did decide to forego the tub. And I said, okay, so now when you do go to sell, you might get people who say they don't want the house because of the tub. There is no tub. But look at that shower. Look at the difference that that makes. So again, this is why you really need to make sure you're partnering with the right agent and you know what updates are worth it and what aren't. Again, seller playbook below. Okay, this is going back to the bedroom. You can see that the one on the left is just a little dated and then look at the way that that bed is made. It doesn't look great and it's dark brown. So it is very dated and drab. And then you can see the second one on the picture, we actually pushed it up. It's much lighter, it's much brighter. And then you can see that that blanket there was also staged into that picture as well. I love this room because I'm sure you would not even think that this is the same same exact room, but yes it is. So the one on the left, as you can see, is red. It is red. Red does not shoot well in pictures. It just looks dated. Now I'm not saying if you have a red house, you have to paint it. I just want you to be aware that people do tend to think that if it's red or something like this maroony color, it's dated. I mean, this whole room is like a perfect example of like what looks dated, but the room is literally the same exact room. You can see that the drapes are changed. They're a little bit lighter, brighter. They're tall to the ceiling, which is a little trendier. The furniture, of course, is a little trendy, but the walls are painted. I mean, that's essentially it in this room. So for all you women out there whose husbands don't understand the difference in pictures, make sure you save this one so that you can show them. I hate to say it, I get a lot of husbands who don't quite understand the significance of making sure the home looks correct and why do we need to paint it? It looks fine, we've lived like that. Why do we need a new bed covering? It looks fine. So if they had taken down the curtains, if they had just put on a, maybe even a white cover on that, taken off the dated stuff in the rest of the room, I mean, it would have been a totally different room. So this is the one I want you guys to mark this one. Show your husbands this picture. I'm showing this picture not because it's, you know, great picture on either side, but I just want to again want to show you this was a bedroom basement. And if there had been no furniture in there, it would have just been a room. You wouldn't have known what it was. But you can see on the left that the furniture is a little dated and it's just not, it doesn't look great. The color in the picture isn't great. The color in the walls isn't great. And on the right, it just looks a little trendier. So now this is a room, no windows, no closets, nothing. But you can see a difference in just the way the room feels. Again, not a huge difference. And also, you know, if you can't get a room to look decent in your photos, I don't want you to document. I've talked about this before in some of my other videos. I don't want you to document the room just to document. It's got to look somewhat decent. So you can just see the difference in the colors, the photo, and the lighter bedspread. And then finally, this is not real different either, but I just want to show you the difference in a photo and what difference that can make and how you actually perceive a room. So you can see that they have big built-in on the right is built in. So that stayed and it's just all new furniture in there. Again, the room was pulled back. Okay. The photography was pulled back. The room was painted. And then you have a few nice lighter things in there. On the first picture on the left, there's a lot of stuff in there and it just feels heavy and dated. Also on the right, it just seems brighter. So you can see that the photographer definitely made the light come in from the windows a little bit more. Again, not a huge difference, but I just want you to see these little, little, little tiny things that buyers see when they're going through your house. I always say that your photos are your very, very first showing. So you want to make sure that your photos look 
great. And in order for your photos to look great, you have to know what looks good in those, which is why you need to start planning early, early. In my channel, I talk a lot about what you need to do to make sure when you go to sell your home, it is profitable for you. You are getting the most amount of money for your home with the least amount of updates. And because of that, I want to make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel. I really do talk about how to keep your investment in your home high, just like a financial planner would do. And having an agent that you can go to and trust about what to do with your home to keep your investment high is as important as a financial planner. And I know sometimes it's really hard because we are considered to be salespeople, but experienced agents have gotten beyond the salesperson and they really are consultants. So I want to make sure that you're out there finding experienced agents who can help guide you. And they're not just in it for the money. They want to make sure that they're helping you maximize the value of your home. If you need an agent, link below. And if you want to download that seller playbook, link is below. I promise it's going to make you more money when you go to sell. So I hope I've been able to show you how home decorating and home staging can change the way your home looks when you're ready to sell.